Have you guys been watching Netflix's newest series, The Glory, that's rated number one on 2023's Korean drama list and number three on global Netflix? This show is so hot right now for its crazy revenge plot, where a girl who's been through the most horrendous torment by her high school classmates grows up to bring her own revenge upon them. You might have noticed the dramatic scenes that went viral online, especially the curling iron scene, where the perpetrators taunt the classmate with it, leaving her scars forever. These dramatic scenes seem so outrageous, but it's not a fantasy. It's a story based in real life event called Cheongju City's Schoolgirl Case. Also, the main character plotting revenge for years till she meets her classmates again 17 years later also happened in real life. A man who plotted a revenge on his classmates who taunted him all his school years, who then almost executed his revenge plan on their 12 year school reunion. I remember when I was in middle school, I was taunted so bad for three years exactly by this girl. I think because I was like this little Asian girl, the only Asian girl in school, she made my life hell. And recently, like I happened to come across her Facebook and I see that she was like a meditation or some kind of like a spiritual guru. And I just thought it was a little funny um, because she was so mean to me. She gathered up group of girls, taunted me for a long, long time. And now to see her kind of like preach about positivity, it just felt a little odd. Thank God for me, it didn't go into like physical fights or anything, but I have a friend who went to the hospital because his classmates were taunting him during his school days. So these things do happen, but it seems like in America, it's not being as widely talked about as in Korea right now where school taunting incidences are hot. I'm sure you guys have seen many K-pop artists, actresses, and actors, their careers go down the drain. K-pop stars who's being kicked out of their group because of school taunting news, especially if you're found of being a perpetrator, it seems like the K-pop entertainment is taking strong actions. Also, I already know that this video will probably be demonetized because anytime that I mention or talk about school taunting or bullying, it's always flagged or demonetized. So all I ask is a kind like, take one second to just subscribe and share this video, or even just leaving a comment on today's thought really help to still hit the algorithm so the videos are seen even if it's demonetized. Thank you everyone for watching and being here. I really appreciate you guys. The Glory is about an 18 year old student named Tongun attending high school and her and other weaker, quote, weaker students are taunted by the rich, wealthy, privileged other classmates. Now this isn't just little mean words being exchanged, this is extreme taunting. Some of the things that the characters go through include physical assaults, S assaults, making them do the chores, steal money, fear tactics, perpetrators, parents mediating with the victim for money, and on and on, and especially that infamous hair curling iron scene that's going viral. Tongun is held down by other classmates, and the main villain girl burns her for pleasure. She does this on multiple different occasions, and Tongun is left with forever scars all over her body. She ends up dropping out of high school, but decides to devote the rest of her life to now get back at the perpetrators to ruin their fancy adult life like they did to her. In the drama, Tongun even says, you took away my soul. And this scene is apparently not fantasy, it happened in real life. I believe for legal reasons, the screenwriter said that it is not directly motivated by these stories, but in a sense, I can obviously can find crazy similarities between the real life stories. So the drama starts from around 2004 when the classmates are around 17 years old. But in real life, this case happened in 2006 to a middle school student called the Cheongju Middle School Incident. May of 2006, Six, a female student named Kim would claim that for 20 days she had been tormented, tortured by her fellow classmates. And the saddest thing is that Kim actually had to report to the police herself because nobody was there to help her. Apparently, she started to be taunted by the three classmates all because she wouldn't answer to their question. These three classmates would first start by telling her to bring money. They requested about $10 for her to bring every single day. And if she didn't, this is when the school taunting would begin. They would first start by hitting her with books. Then it escalated to poking her with needles. Then escalated again to using baseball bats to hit her physically 
all over her body. Then it would finally escalate to the worst of all, the hair curling iron. Kim said in quote, with exact line from the drama, they would do temperature checks of the curling iron every few days. The two students would actually physically hold down Kim. Then the main perpetrator, A, would do temperature checks on Kim's body, especially her arms. And here are the real photos and videos of the incident. You could see similarities, almost identical similarities to the glory drama. In real life, they would also make Kim rip the scabs that was healing from the burn that they caused as a punishment for not bringing money that day. You might wonder why Kim didn't get help sooner and why this happened for 20 days and possibly even more counting. Now, just like in the movie where tong -un didn't have the support that she needed from her teachers and her peers and her parents, in real life, Kim Kim also was only living with her father and apparently Kim was kind of bouncing back off from her father and her relatives house so it seems like her relatives and her father really didn't pay attention to her well-being her father remembers that sometimes Kim would wake up in the middle of the night screaming and begged her father to move schools but her father thought that hey everybody wants to move school all kids go through hard time in school and he did not notice that this was happening to her apparently these three girls were acting as Kim BFFs in front of Kim's parents and relatives and other teachers in order to conceal and just be mean, mean girls. After around 20 days, it was finally Kim who had the courage to call the police 112 and seek help. Now, apparently all these things, the taunting happened in school classrooms. In the movie, it happens at the school gym, but in real life, this happened in the classroom. So even more odd, why didn't the teachers notice anything? But I do think for the students, maybe they they were also afraid to be the next target so they didn't say anything. But teachers, come on, could they really not have noticed this? So when finally Kim got the courage to go to the police, apparently the perpetrators were still threatening her and she ended up being forced to say the wrong names. So she named three completely unrelated students' names. Now they became victims because they were getting threatening calls and their personal information were spread online and it was just creating even more chains of victims. But in the end, police did end up finding the main perpetrator. I believe the other two were not prosecuted. And the last update that we know is that A, the main villain girl, she did end up being arrested, um, but we do not know what the outcome of the case was because she was probably protected under the minor law. And ironically, it's been 17 years since the real case. They mentioned the number 17 a lot in the drama, actually. But a lot of netizens are calling out for justice. They want to know what happened because we don't know actually if the perpetrator did get a fair amount of punishment. But also in this case, some of the teachers also got a light punishment or warning for not blocking this kind of school taunting. We do know that the students were 1991 liners. They would be turning 32 this year. So just like the drama, they could be like moms living so such a great life. But some people are saying, should these perpetrators life be exposed now, 17 years later? Do we have the right to touch on something that happened years ago? Well, in that case, what would happen if the victim decides to plot a revenge on his or her bullies? On January 2nd, 1991, 5 p.m. in Saga City, Japan, someone organized a school reunion. It's been 12 years since everybody has seen each other and about 40 students and five former teachers were invited. This reunion was conducted by a man named Asahi. And surprisingly, on this day of the reunion, the person who organized it never showed up. So the students thinking that I'm sure people couldn't show up, they just ended up having this fun reunion, talking about their old times and you know, having drinks. And they just had a normal, beautiful school reunion night. Now the next day, these classmates were now adults would open their front page of their newspaper. In the 90s, that's how you got your news. In today's world, you would be waking up looking at your phone and all of seeing your classmate, the person who was supposed to organize and come to the reunion party, is arrested and on front page for plotting a murder. Now going back to the school days, it seems like Asahi was the weaker one out of all his classmates. Starting from elementary school, they said that he never really got along with other people. It's also reported that both of his parents were teachers, so this could have contributed to his perception on the school system and how much he would end up hating it. After elementary school, Asahi would then move 
move and transfer to a new middle school where his parents hoped that he would now finally get along. It would start as classmates just poking fun in Asahi and would gradually get worse, claiming that they're playing wrestle and would put him in a headlock hit him with a chair and desk. I mean, yeah, sometimes boys grow up being boys, but this was not a play fight. They would also lock him up in a cleaning supply closet. Again, banging his head on school chairs and desk, which led him to get multiple stitches. Pull his pants down in front of female classmates, and they would all laugh and make fun of him. It even got as worse as making him drink sewage water. So we see some examples of what kind of taunting that these classmates made aside he do. And Asahi did try to get help. He did speak up to his teachers and parents. And apparently the response he got was, you probably did something wrong. You probably did something to piss those boys off too. You have to be a man and stand up for yourself. That was a response that he got from the adults as a young middle school kid. And again, it could be that the school parents were also teachers, so they were kind of tired of seeing Asahi go through all these kind of troubles with his classmates and moving schools and things like that. Asahi would then say that he was severely taunted for the rest of his middle school years. And finally in high school, he would transfer to a specialized school. And Asahi decided to major in chemistry. He would later go on to graduate and go to college, get a degree, and finally got a job and hired in a company that was related to developing chemicals. His parents were very proud, especially majoring in chemistry and things like that. That really takes like a book smart person. But the creepy part is this was all part of his plan. Just like in the drama, Tongwen literally spends the rest of her life devoting to plotting her revenge, getting a specific job, earning a certain amount of money. Who she would be meeting, when and where to execute this plan is specifically how everything was part of her plan. And just like this, the reason why Asahi decided to major in chemistry, get a specific job, all had to do with devoting his life for that day. And even more crazier similarities where Tongun is literally writing in her diary and letters to the perpetrators for the future, this is what Asahi did. Starting from high school, Asahi would write in his diaries, quote, I am dreaming to get back at them one day. That's all I'm thinking about. How should I kill them? According to the diary, we would find out that he would devote his 20s to learn about how to make at home bomb. He would spend his time prepping and trying all different chemicals and materials in the best way for the D Day. Asahi was now 27 years old and felt ready to finally get his revenge, and that he's going to get the addresses and numbers of all his classmates and teachers that he wanted to invite to this reunion party. So it wasn't just the classmates, he also hated the teachers who seemed to kind of watch by what he was going through. So so he got all the addresses and some of the numbers and he would send out surveys to their address like what is the date what is the month that you guys are all free and apparently it seemed to be january and february where everybody seemed to be free finally he decided to pick january 2nd as the date of the reunion he was the one who got the location he was the one who got the food and drinks for everybody and apparently these letters that was sent out was made with such care and love and excitement and he pretended to really Really be excited to see everyone and to be hosting this reunion. Like we're gonna have a fun time talking about our school days and everybody was excited. All 40 people decided to come. In his diary excerpt, it says, I finished the experiment, now it's time. So far, living for me has been painful. This will all end. All those who treated me like bugs will get what they deserve. Asahi would then even quit his job few days before the reunion so he could get ready for this. And he also wrote that he was ready and prepared to go down with everybody. So he was prepared to fully die himself as well. So he knew and had been waiting for this day by day for 12 years. So this was his plan. He got a bunch of beer bottles. He put some arsenic and apparently this was foreign beer that had a strong taste. So they wouldn't really notice it. And he was to hand this out to everybody. He also had homemade 
bombs. December 31st, he would go to the location where he rented out for the party and stocked it up with his special beer. But then January 1st, Asahi's mother found out that Asahi actually quit his job. And she thought that that was so weird. Why would he quit his like amazing chemistry job? She felt something was wrong. She went to his room and went through his bags where she found his diary. And in the diary excerpts, she read his full plan on wanting to literally kill all his classmates. Asahi's mother knew that she had to report to the police and indeed she did. And on January 1st, Asahi would be arrested. Police would go to the location of the party and they did find the tainted beer. They took that as evidence and even went to his car, which had more bombs and went to his house, which had more bombs. Apparently the bomb that was in his room exploded and the policeman ended up having severe burns. For some reason, um, police did not actually notify the school of reunion. Ironically, the party went on without Asahi. When Asahi was arrested, he explained that he just wanted to let the world know his feelings and his emotions and what he went through. In the end, he would receive six year sentence for his crimes and yes, Although some people are sympathetic to what he went through, it is illegal in today's law to plot a murder, especially plot a revenge to take someone's life. Now that people have watched the glory drama and we have seen exactly what the victims went through, people want to see the victim get revenge on the perpetrators. People want to see this dramatic ending where the perpetrator's life is ruined and things like that. But in real life, what should happen? Was it so wrong for Asahi to bottle up his feelings for 12 years? It was there another way? If so, what kind of way could Asahi have done to get through to his perpetrators? What happens if the severe, taunting perpetrators never get punishment, never are apologetic, and they are able to live on with their lives, like as nothing happened and good things happened to them, they're married. How would the victim feel watching their perpetrators live on with their best life. Although it was wrong for what Asahi did, a lot of people just cannot feel bad for the perpetrators. Should Asahi have gotten longer sentencing? Was this justified? My personal two cents is that I know that a lot of people change as they become an adult. Like I said, the girl who taunted me in middle school, it seems like she seems that she has changed for the positive. And to be pointed fingers at and blamed for something that you've done when you were young, I don't think that's entirely fair. But what happens if these perpetrators have left scars in my body who has literally physically an SA and completely just crossed the line when it comes to school taunting. The legal worst thing that you can do these days is to have the perpetrators career and what they do now exposed online. But at the same time, that also could create more victims because there's many cases in the K-pop entertainment where there's people who just write BS online. And it was proven that some of the stories were not true. It was just made up by random people or blown out of proportion just so that they can get back at a certain celebrity. So I do think sometimes this is a touchy and a pretty hard question to answer. So I would love to know your opinion. Let me know in the comments down below. Again, your like in this video just by subscribing really helps to hit the algorithm especially when videos are tough to monetize thank you for watching and see you guys in my next video